listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, not great. But. Not great. <laughs> I, I got my old man stuff going today. I yeah. went to the dentist this morning. Though. I had some dental work done today. That. And so, like, for half my day, half my face, I couldn't feel. And That's the worst, yeah. man. I cannot stand when they numb you like that. Yeah. Especially, it's almost... Like, it's bad enough when you're numb and you can't feel and you feel like you got the fat face or whatever. Yeah. But then when it starts coming back and it's all like a sleep feeling, oh man, that's even worse. I just felt like I was drooling out of the right corner of my mouth all day. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I kept wondering, like, there was nothing ever there, but I just, like, I kept feeling like I didn't, I felt like a stroke victim. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, and then I, I couldn't eat either because since I couldn't feel, like, my upper palate, I didn't, like, going, swallowing didn't feel right. Yeah. Well, that you're gonna like chew the side of your face off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can bite the inside of my cheek and have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Where did all this blood come from? <laughs> I eat my rare steak. <laughs> wow, this is awfully irony. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. So, um, so there's that. Yeah. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I might be a little low energy. Tonight. Yeah. I'm gonna try not to be. There's some things that I'm kind of passionate about that we're gonna talk about. So I, hopefully, it'll. It'll come through. Yeah, it'll rise. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Yeah. Any, any any terrible complaints about the day for you? No, I, I mean, you know, the usual, my back hurts and all that. But, you know, today hadn't been as bad as other days, I'll say. Yeah. So, yeah. Not not as old manny as I usually am. Okay. So. Well, that's that's good. You only just turned 40. I know. So, so I still got some good days yeah. ahead. That was a good party, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had a, a, lot, a lot of fun people came out. Yeah. So. None of whom listened to the podcast. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I thought we may as well start with uh, the attempts to rein in inflation that Congress is. Oh man! So do. yeah, this is ex- I, like, I, hey, I'm glad they're doing something. You know, I mean, it's important that we get you know this inflation under control. We've been talking about it on the podcast. I'm glad to see that Congress is getting on board. Finally, and gonna, taking some action. Going to take some yeah. action because that's that's really what we need here is more government action. Like that's absolutely, um, and we can express that in so many words. Now, the what they've they are passing here, or they've passed, I guess is the Inflation Reduction Act. Have they passed it? I think it's going to, actually, just because it's... going to, but um, I think... So I saw something today. It went through the House, I thought, but it hasn't been through the Senate. It hasn't been through the Senate, and they need all members, all the Democratic members in the Senate, like physically there. Yeah. And a couple of them, I think, have COVID. Oh, that, I think yeah, that's right. Mansions, Mansions one of them got and COVID. somebody else. Yeah, they, they've been delaying because of that. Yeah, so um, they were wanting to get it through this week. Doesn't look like it's going to, but but it's coming. Like it's gonna pass. Yeah, like, yeah, I suspect so. And uh, yeah, the Inflation Reduction Act, which already sounds like a joke. Yeah, um, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, that that signals that they're doing something. Like, well, uh, what's uh, okay? So obviously. Um, the easiest way to rein in uh, inflation um, from the point of view of the government is to spend more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, never mind that that's what caused this in the first place. Well, it wasn't them spending money. It was them creating money. Well, creating money. <laughs> that, yeah. That caused this in the first place. So, well, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like some of the stuff in it is just, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of amazing to me. And, and we don't really have to spend a whole lot of time on this because Honestly, if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, like you know this, these issues are gonna like the problem are, is gonna be self evident. Yeah. Um, but like some of the things that they're trying to do to generate, because they're not they're not funding it; it's supposed to fund itself. Yeah. Right. So um, let's just look at a couple of the things that they're doing to <laughs> for it to fund itself. Yeah. Um, one is that they <coughs> are creating a fifteen percent minimum corporate tax. Now, they also said that they weren't going to do this through taxation, but that is a tax that, I mean, if they're creating it... <laughs> yeah, it's a new tax. It's a new tax. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, like, just right off the bat, again, what better way to bring down prices than to raise the cost of doing business? <laughs> yeah. It's like these people have have never worked in the private sector at all. 
Like, I mean, many of them have it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I see the look you're giving me, yeah. and I know. It, but that's but it is the truth. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, just like you said, I mean, it's pretty self-evident. But, I mean, if, you, if you're taxing businesses more, those businesses don't just pay the tax and take a loss. Yeah. They pass it on to the customer. Yeah. Like, that's economics what should be economics 101. Like, that's... Well, and, and I'm trying to look at this, like, in their terms, because... When, when these uh, politicians talk about inflation, they're talking about price inflation. They're not talking about uh, money supply. Yeah. Like when we talk about it, like real inflation. Yeah. Is just this it, is, um, the, is the increase in money supply. Absolutely. Um, it, it causes a, a price increase just because there's more money chasing fewer goods, etc. Yeah. But, um, but the of course the cause of inflation is actually the the rapid increase in money supply yeah. um, or I guess increase in money su- supply. That's not commensurate with an increase in production. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, but even on, on their terms, you would think if they want to get prices down, then costing businesses more money. Isn't going to get you where you want to go. Yeah. Why, why would that help? Yeah. Well, because um, they've got to have money to fund this other stuff they're going to do. Yeah. I and mean, that's that's what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, most of it is about, like, shifting the way we produce energy in this country and incentivizing different energy production and so forth. But And actually, this particular, this corporate tax, they say that they're going to use that to pay for part of the bill. And they'll have... Um, Three hundred billion dollars uh, to put to pay down the the U.S. Um, national deficit. Oh yeah. All right. Over ten years. Oh yeah. <laughs> Three hundred billion dollars over ten years. Now, of wow. course, the yeah. Congressional Budget Office don't don't, over, don't overdo it there, Congress. <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> it, well, and even worse, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that uh, there's sixteen trillion in. We're going to generate sixteen trillion with a T, yeah, like Tango, yeah. Um, in new debt over that ten years. Yeah. So they're going to pay it down by thirty billion dollars a year, but they're going to increase the debt by one point six trillion a year. Yeah, uh, that's it's insanity. It's <laughs> like, not helping us. Just yeah. Um, and then uh, another one of the big money making schemes is that they're going to give the IRS more money so, to pursue people that are avoiding taxes. Yeah, this is the one that that irritates me more than anything. I bet it does. Um because just the idea that we're like, all right, we're not going to raise taxes. What we're going to do is make sure we enforce the taxes already on the books better. Yeah. Like more reason to dig into your your finances and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I got to stand up. I'm sorry. I got to crank. Okay. Well, um <laughs> The uh, this is interesting to me because they are taking your money to give to the IRS so that the IRS can take more of your money. And this is supposed to somehow improve our economy by taking more money out of the civilian economy and giving it to the government. Yeah, (laughs) that makes no sense. Like, there's no way to do this. I don't know, but it's irritating because, and this is one that's going to bite people personally. Mm -hmm. Like this is the one that's going to like, so, so the corporate thing that's going to impact you as far as the prices are concerned, but this one's going to impact you like come time, tax time. Yeah. This is the one that you're going to, more people are going to be audited, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, Causing even more of a disruption in the economy as you yeah. have to spend resources to fight against the IRS to prove that you can keep your own money. Exactly. Um, and uh, and even the numbers here are weird to me. It's like they're spending eighty billion and they expect that it'll generate something like two hundred and fourteen billion. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I would point out is that cost overrun is a very normal thing yeah. in government spending. Yeah. So I would be amazed amazed if they actually generate more tax income than what they spend trying to enforce <laughs> it's just it's just law. a way to to get you further under the, their thumb man yeah um at the end of the day yeah because it it yeah you're right i mean there's only you can only squeeze so much mm-hmm. you know and it's not like people won't find other ways to hide their money 
Well, that's just it. There's I, the same thing with the 15% corporate tax, too. I mean, it's not like yeah. they can't just move it somewhere else. Oh, and they will. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's these corporations and stuff, I mean, they've got armies of lawyers that that's mm-hmm. all they do. Yeah. I mean, tax attorneys and uh, and good accountants um, demand high prices. And it's they demand high prices and that's because, because they, they still save you more than it costs. Yeah, it's still a net gain for <laughs> <Yeah>. you, <laughs> yeah. the person paying them. Yeah. I mean, although truthfully, I would pay, I mean, a, at least a small amount more to uh, an accountant or an attorney to keep that money away from the government. Yeah. <laughs> but that's me personally. <laughs> you, I don't think don't, most people oh, come feel on, that come way. Come on, Mike. You don't want to do your patriotic duty and pay more taxes? Yeah, so that they can um, you know kill people halfway around the world yeah. with my money? <laughs> nah. Oh, come on, man. It's, it's, you got to do the patriotic thing. No. It's patriotic to pay taxes. Um, there are a bunch of things in this about... Uh, Shifting to green energy, um, subsidizing uh, various kinds of, of green energy production. Um, now, of course, none of that changes the price of gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, right. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not sure how that's supposed to help. And they, they've even said that uh, inflation will continue to rise through 2024 with this plan. But then after that, it should get better. I, I've got additional news for you. Unless they continue to print money like they have over the last two years, that's yeah. what would happen anyway. Well, yeah, this, yeah, that's, <laughs> and it's funny that they mentioned that date because that mm-hmm. just happens to be an election year. Like, yeah, I mean that's that date or that year didn't just like come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, there wasn't, You'll see improvement there wasn't, in twenty twenty four when you can elect another Democrat because you won't be in such dire straits. Exactly. You will see that the Democrat improved your situation, right? Yeah. Like that's the idea. Yep. Um, yeah, you're you're probably right. There's there's no, um, yeah, there's no accident in that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, but the truth is that it won't matter to people. Like even if things are improving, like yeah. if if people are paying three fifty for a gallon of gas, and that's a whole, actually, I was about to say that they <coughs> they're still going to look at those dollar eighty days and be like, oh my god, you know, we're, I'm paying twice as much for gas. Yeah. But. I already see people saying, oh, well, you know, gas is down to $4 a gallon where I am. Like, oh, man, this is so great. This yeah. is so great. Like, a year ago, it was 2 bucks. Well, exactly. Um, and I've heard the same thing. Like, oh, gas is finally coming down. I was like, dude, it ain't coming down to where I want it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, my memory is a little better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Like, just because it was at $5 doesn't mean that I've forgotten the days of $2, which weren't that yeah. long ago. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. Like, I mean, I remember paying a dollar, but mm-hmm. like, that was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think when I started driving, it was like 78 cents a gallon or something. Oh, man. To I can date myself a little bit. But. I can remember. I remember when I was in high school, $10 would fill up my tank. Yeah. And I could drive like a week on $10 a gas. Yeah. That's like unfathomable now. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I um I saw a little, God, I can't even remember where it was. Oh, it was in the John Oliver thing. Um, yeah. The TikTok video of the guy saying he just got his new car and now he... Uh, you know, just got his first car, I guess. And, and, uh, now he understands why everybody's complaining. I put 20 bucks in and it's like less than a quarter of a tank. He's right. like, what? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what is this? Oh man. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, n- this is really just a way to try and, and, uh, kind of push this agenda harder. Oh, yeah. Um, and you know, there's, there's money in it for all kinds of stupid pork things. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, one thing that you can feel fairly confident about is that the Inflation Reduction Act isn't going to reduce inflation. Yeah. Well, and that's... that's All these contradictory terms that I'm using <laughs> together are just really weird. Right. Yeah. But anytime Congress passes a bill, whatever they say they're going to do in the mm-hmm. title of the bill, you can about bet that it's going to do the opposite. Yeah. Go look back at the USA Freedom Act. The Freedom Act. Yeah, exactly. The mm-hmm. Patriot Act. All yeah. of that stuff, man. Not yeah. the most unpatriotic act there could have been. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the Freedom Act did nothing but restrict freedoms. Exactly. Yeah. So and incorporate the surveillance state. Um, well, uh, let's see. Do you have anything more? The economics is really the thing that you get excited yeah. about. So um, I don't think I've got a whole lot more. I mean, it's like I say, we'll see how it plays out, but it's not. Yeah. Well, it's. Um, it's just another one of those situations like the school bus and the 
police cars and the ambulance on the ice, yeah. um, where government is trying to solve a problem that it created, or at least make you think that it's solving the problem that it created. Yeah. Um, and of course they're blaming everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, everything else. And this it's all political. This is all gearing up for the midterms. I mean, that's they, the reason they want this passed soon is because they all want to be able to go out on the trail and say they did something. Right. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's what this is. And that it was the Republicans that were hindering them. It's the Republicans oh, yeah. that want them to starve. Exactly. Um, rather than and the Republicans are saying, well, they're just spending a whole bunch of your money that's not going to help your situation at all, which yeah. is actually more accurate. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they get it right. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> they won't say it for the right reasons. Oh, uh, you know, I meant to um, listen to a clip uh, that I had on this because another thing that I just kind of wanted to mention as we, you know, by way of transition here a little bit, um, is that they did just vote, Congress did just vote to uh, to invite Sweden and Finland into NATO. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I miss this. Yeah, to me, this is counterproductive. There was, <coughs> actually, there was only one vote against in the Senate. Can who? you guess who? <laughs> I'm guessing it was Rand Paul. You were wrong. Really? Yes, it was Josh Hawley. Rand Paul voted present. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was irritated by that yeah yeah i, I would be i mean i am like yeah, yeah. i mean that's that's crazy so, he's supposed to be good on this stuff. yeah um i mean it's uh, you know it's another one of those questions of like what benefit do these countries bring to nato all they really do is they create more of an opportunity for conflict no. um finland shares like an a, a huge border with russia yeah um they haven't felt the need for nato in the past and I just don't see that they need NATO now. Both yeah. of those countries are perfectly capable of defending themselves. I mean, for what it's worth, I saw, and this was, God, this was probably a month ago, when all, when they were talking about adding Finland. Mm -hmm. um, one of the channels I was watching, they were doing like a man on the street thing and um, just talking to different, they called them Finns. Mm -hmm. um, and like they, so a, a ton of them were saying, well, you know, we never really saw a need, but now that Russia's invaded Ukraine, now we think we th this is something we need. We need this protection and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, of course, I'm screaming at the TV the whole time. <laughs> yeah. But, but, I mean, it is their country, and that's what uh, it sounded like a majority of the people wanted, you know. Well, uh, I, fair enough, I suppose. And they, um, they supported that with polls and stuff. Like, So they talked to people mm -hmm. on the street, and that was kind of the response they were getting. Mm -hmm. But then the, the commentator kind of had supported it. Like there had been a huge swing in the country that, yeah. that the you know, they had decided that that's the country had kind of decided that's what they wanted to do. I kind of find it interesting that the, the polling of the Finns and how many of them want to join NATO – um, is accepted while the plebiscite held by the Crimeans that they wanted to be a part of Russia is completely ignored. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, listen. Well, it goes, it, but that goes to the whole, you know, you, you pick and choose, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, re restructure your definitions and so forth. Yeah. Because um, at the end of the day, nobody really wants democracy. They want their way, and right. they want to use democracy as the excuse yeah, to, justification. Do, to do what they want to do. Well, um, I have a clip about Sweden and Finland joining NATO that I pulled like probably two months ago, yeah. and we never talked about it. So um, let's uh, let's listen to that clip and see what I've got. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm curious. <laughs> so I was going to ask because I understand that obviously Russia invading Ukraine in February changed all kinds of things in Europe. But in terms of why it totally changed the calculus for you in Sweden, you don't have a border with Ukraine, you don't have a border with Russia, you're saying it was suddenly it felt like you might be all alone? You know, if we are out of NATO and all the other countries around us is in NATO, we will have a weaker situation in all these partnerships. And at the same time, when we are out of it in that new scenario, we will be more exposed to Russia. So we have a bigger risk towards Russia that they can make pressure on us when we are alone. Okay, I'm glad I kept that one. That was a good clip. <laughs> I, I, I think that was the Swedish foreign minister. Okay. Um, I don't remember that because it was a long time ago. Yeah. And I didn't put that in the title of the, um, of the, clip, of the clip. So I, yeah. I could be wrong about that. Um, but it, it is certainly like some high-level Swedish official. Yeah. Um, and I find it interesting that, like, kind of the unspoken portion of that um, is that that 
NATO is kind of a threat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he implies it. He doesn't say it, but he's yeah. like, if if we uh, if we're surrounded by NATO, then we're all alone. Yeah, and you know that puts us in a weaker position. Yeah. Um, and when he's when he says that in the first part, he's talking about in relation to NATO countries. Yeah. Puts us in a weaker position in relation to NATO countries, yeah. and um, we're uh, we can be pressured by Russia more easily as well. Absolutely. So it's almost an afterthought. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and I, yeah, so yeah. I I think that it it doesn't benefit the um, the alliance. I don't think that there's going to be much resistance to us. Uh, Turkey. Um, they've already gotten their portion because they didn't want the invitation to go out to Sweden and Finland, and then they got um, they got a deal, and yeah. so they allowed it to go through. I doubt that they'll raise much of a stink about actually um, the, accepting going all them. The way through. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll see. I mean, they they see themselves in a position of power. It does take a unanimous vote to yeah. um, to to receive entry into NATO. So yeah, you know, maybe they'll use that position again. Yeah. Get something else. Yeah. Or maybe somebody else will. Yeah. Um, but it'll be purely political, I think, at that point. There's not going to, I don't think yeah. there's going to be any real resistance to bringing Sweden and Finland in, yeah. although there should be. Yeah. Because, uh, again, you have just increased the risk of uh, conflict with Russia that much more. Yep. Now, I don't think Russia has any interest in going into Finland. No. Um, but mistakes well, happen, and that's well, a long border. Well, that's just it. And, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really think they were going to go into Ukraine when they did. I didn't either. So, I mean, who knows? Like, anything's mm -hmm. possible. But it, it just, it does create an opportunity for something to happen. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it's, I don't think, so I was listening to a Scott Horton interview with Douglas McGregor yesterday, I guess is when I was listening to it, maybe the day before. Anyway, um, McGregor was saying that he didn't think that uh, Putin had any interest in going into Ukraine. Yeah. But that they just reached a point where he didn't feel like he had any other options. Yeah. Um, well, and, and we talked about that at the time. That, yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's kind of been boxed into a corner here. Mm -hmm. And you can disagree with what he's doing, but... And I do. Yeah. But you kind of have to understand the corner he's in. Right. You know, I mean, that's not to be dis disregarded, you know. And, and and we're doing the same thing with China. Yes. <laughs> now, um, is uh, is you know like Pelosi going to Taiwan, um, and you know there's a bunch of people like I, I've seen it in comments on um, <coughs> on uh, the internet. I have uh, heard it from people in real life and so forth saying, "Well, we can't let China dictate to us who's going to go visit where." Yeah. Um, that's uh, bull. <laughs> yeah. Well, not it. Even if you're not, I get, I get the whole like, yeah, we should be able to do what we want to, and that's mm. fine. Doesn't make it a good idea. Yeah, you have to have some respect for the wishes of other countries. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, I mean, especially, particularly when you're talking about nuclear powered countries. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's not like this is some podunk little country you know i mean this is i mean we're, you're messing with the big dogs yeah well and this kind of thing has happened a few times before um i think most recently it was during the clinton administration yeah. and um and uh it, it was because we let their former president have a visa to come speak um in the u.s uh, i think it was at a college or something but anyway um and he talked about an independent Taiwan and like, you know, it created outrage. So actually, like we've been sending weapons, we've been doing training for the Taiwanese, et cetera. Yeah. Um, China hasn't made an issue out of that. China only makes an issue out of it when um, when it comes to uh, even like a kind of a tacit recognition of Taiwanese independence. Yeah. And um, the United States has stuck with a one China policy. We, we have supported the one China policy for a long time to protect U S interests. Yeah. Um, so what is that exactly? Cause I'm not, that's that it is. Uh, so with respect to like Hong Kong, it's, um, it's one nation, two governments, okay. uh, with Taiwan, it's that we <coughs> officially accept 
Chinese sovereignty over Taiwan, even if they're not exercising uh, it. Yeah, okay. even even if I mean that's like, that's kind of what I thought. I just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same thing. Yeah, um, essentially, we don't recognize the Taiwanese government as an independent sovereign government. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, China has said that they'll take that land back, yeah. but they don't have a real intention of doing it militarily. Yeah. Um, I don't think. Uh, yeah. First off, because it's just not worth it to them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the truth is that for for China to invade Taiwan and take Taiwan by force would be a huge undertaking in yeah. terms of resources. Yeah. Because it is, even though it's a it's a small, um, it's about a hundred, roughly hundred to one hundred and fifty miles, um, I think, between uh, mainland China and Taiwan. Um, like an amphibious assault on an island yeah. that has modern and um, is trained on modern military equipment, U.S. equipment, yeah, be difficult. Oh yeah. I, I mean, they would win. Oh yeah. But it would be, it would be a huge resource undertaking to do it. Yeah. Um, at the same time, the U.S. trying to defend Taiwan from China yeah. would also be a huge resource undertaking for the U.S. Oh, yeah. Um, and China is in, while Taiwan is in the better position, uh, is in a superior military position in terms of, um, like, uh, I guess, what they need to employ to defend the island from China, yeah. um, over China, although China certainly has resource superiority. Yeah. Um, but the positioning is better for Taiwan to defend to defend their island. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the same time, the U.S. is 6,000, 8,000 miles away. Yeah. Um, and so the logistics of that put uh, China in a superior um, tactical position to take Taiwan and defend it from the U.S. Yeah, once they have it. Or even for the U.S. Yeah. to try and help. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, and it's always easier when you're playing defense than it is to play offense. Absolutely. And it, it's also a lot easier when you're closer to your home shore. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, so, like, the the status quo has held for a while, and I don't think that it's changing anytime soon. Yeah. Um, China is perfectly content to play the long game. Yeah. And essentially, I, I actually, I think we've made it easy. I think Pelosi has made it easier for them. Yeah. Um, because the results of Pelosi's trip to, to Taiwan are that now uh, China has closed a bunch of areas around Taiwan for military exercises. Um, they've moved military exercises in very close to show that they have control of these waterways if they want. Yeah. Um, it would be very hard for the U.S. to try and free things up because yeah. China, China's right there. Yeah, it's it's their it's their side of the world. <laughs> yeah, um, they can defend their their naval deployments around Taiwan from the mainland. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we can't defend ours. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have Japan and and South Korea over there, yeah. um, also with U.S. military bases, but yeah, it ain't enough. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, in the same way that trying to fight Russia and Ukraine would be a huge undertaking because it's right on Russia's borders. Yeah. They, the logistics are just much easier for them. Yeah. Um, same thing trying to defend Taiwan from China. Yeah. Like we have Japan and bases in Japan and South Korea, India and Australia. Um, so we have bases all around and we have supplied the Taiwanese, but the logistics are difficult for the U S military. Yeah. Yeah. And not as difficult for China. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just it's just kind of absurd to even bring it up. And there is an advantage um, in the strategic ambiguity that we've been employing since 1979, yeah. which is to say that like there's clearly like a tacit um, support for Taiwan, um, but we have never come right out and said that if uh, that we would defend Taiwan from China. Yeah. And that's advantageous because, well, the Chinese know that we would probably defend them yeah. or we could. Yeah. And that that would be there's, trouble. There, yeah. There's a, a good likelihood. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Taiwanese don't get to act with the knowledge that the U.S. would support them. Yeah. Um, and the the case study that I like to bring up in in this, I mean, that people are more familiar with, I suppose, um, is that you have that uh, that area of Russian sovereign territory 
that's on the other side of Lithuania from Russia. Okay. So Russian controls Russia actually has sovereign control over a strip of land um, that's not connected to the Russian mainland and that Lithuania is between Russia and the strip of land. Yeah. Well, um, not long ago in this conflict in, in Europe right now, um, Lithuania shut off, like completely blockaded that strip of Russian territory. Oh, really? Saying that they were enforcing the EU sanctions. Yeah. Um, this almost created a conflict right then and there because it's, it's Russian people who couldn't get food and basic supplies in because Lithuania wouldn't allow uh, sure. anything to come through. Yeah. And, um, and it could have been another big conflict right there. And Lithuania said outright that if they hadn't been a member of NATO, they wouldn't have done that because the only reason they did it is because they knew that Russia couldn't attack them because then it would bring the force of, of NATO down on them. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so this <laughs> and kind that of goes to the whole, why that this Alliance is a problem Yeah. because it emboldens countries to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the concern with, um, strategic clarity in terms of defending Taiwan. Yeah. Um, if Taiwan knows without a doubt that the U S will come to their aid, it incentivizes Taiwan to be more antagonistic with China yeah. because they believe they have the full support of the U S military. And that's a lot of support. Yeah. Um, but so it creates a moral it gives, hazard. It gives them the bigger stick. Yeah. It creates, in their eyes, yeah. it creates a moral hazard in the same way that, um, bailing out banks when they make bad investments does. Yeah. Well, it does. It, there's no deterrence from making bad investments in the future because you know that there's really no risk to what you're doing. Yeah, you're just playing with house money anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that that's the big concern that I have over this is to, to and Biden has said several times since he took office that we have an obligation to defend Taiwan from China. No, we don't. <laughs> we have no official diplomatic connection to Taiwan. Right. Fortunately, I'm pretty sure the Chinese at least look at him and are like, yeah, he may say that, but he ain't really got the wherewithal to follow through. Yeah. Oh, and what I was going to say is, so when this kind of thing has happened in the past and China has done the same thing, which is to start doing military exercises around Taiwan, yeah. the U.S. has responded by sending warships and planes over there as well. Yeah. Um, and then China has responded by like firing missiles and dropping them just short of the Taiwanese coast and like things like that. And they, yeah. they continued to escalate. Now yeah. in the past, you know, eventually diplomacy won out and they, you know, there were deals Settled made down, and, yeah. and de-escalation. But that doesn't seem like the M.O. of the United States anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, taking in consideration that Anthony Blinken has had multiple opportunities since the war in Ukraine began to speak with Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, and has flatly refused to do so, saying that we will not discuss yeah. the Ukraine situation. We have no interest in negotiating. And so I'm concerned that if we create another conflict around Taiwan with China— that will have no interest in negotiating be. and it will continue to um, fester. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, and it's, and it's playing chicken with a nuclear power and well, yeah. I just don't. And so now you, not only do you have everything going on with the Russians, you're stirring up a hornet's nest with the, with the Chinese. Like, why would you want to stir up a hornet's nest with two nuclear powers? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And that was my problem with Pelosi going over there, mm -hmm. because there's nothing we gain from that. Like, we're not getting anything out of her going over there. Well, and I don't think that we have any real strategic interest in Taiwan. Now, um, no, I, I people have said, uh, well, we need Taiwan for uh, as a platform to defend the South China Sea from China or something along those lines. Yeah. I go back to we have bases in Japan and South Korea. Yeah. Also, there's never a moment or an instance where the U.S.'s strategic and security interests in the South China Sea outweighs the strategic and security interests of China right. in the South <laughs> China Sea. Well, you're looking at it all wrong, man. You're not looking at it from the empire perspective. Well, and that's exactly it. Like, you talk about, well, we need these bases over there. I mean, no For other what? country has bases like like yeah. the U.S. does. The U.S. How? has 800, roughly, foreign military bases in, in, like, 70 to 80 countries. Yeah. Right? Like, there's only, there's fewer than 200 countries in the world. Yeah. 
It's the empire. Like mm-hmm. that's all it is. And and I always say the same thing. Like, what if the shoe was on the other foot? Like, what if the Chinese started dropping bases down in Cuba or Mexico or right. something like that? Like, how would we take that? Yeah. Are they decided they wanted to start patrolling the Gulf? Oh, like, I actually thought about a, a, a good example today. Um, there is an independence move, movement in Hawaii. Oh, really? Right. There is a Hawaiian independence movement. There are native Hawaiians that don't want to be a part of the United States that see themselves as a separate nation. Interesting. I mean, I mean, I can see it because they're, I mean, I, I don't know that many Hawaiians, but mm-hmm. the ones I've met, they seem to be very proud of their heritage. Yeah. Like as far as Hawaii is concerned. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I don't know how big this movement is, but I know it exists. But it's out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, what if China yeah. started dropping military bases on Hawaii? Yeah. Right. <laughs> or s- supplying well, the Hawaiian independence movement with with guns and training, with yeah, weapons and that, training. That would be the big thing if they started supplying them with with um, with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like and what? or recognized Hawaii as an independent republic and not part of the United States anymore. Yeah, that's that's like what you say before you start giving them ammo and stuff, <laughs> weapons and ammo. Like, right. You make a statement. Yeah, we no longer reckon. We now recognize Hawaii as an independent state, and yeah, um, yeah, we're gonna start giving them guns and ammo to defend it. Yes, yeah, exactly. And people in this country would go crazy yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. And Hawaii is much farther away from mainland U.S. than oh. Taiwan is from China. Yeah. Um, and there's actually an independent culture in Hawaii as opposed to mainly in the United States, unlike yeah. Taiwan and China. Absolutely. Like the Taiwanese, <laughs> like it or not, are Chinese refugees. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, the whole thing's absurd. Now, of course, the other thing that comes up is that Taiwan has produced something like 60% of the uh, microchips or something. Ah. You know, and that this is very important to the world economy, and so we have to protect that. Of course, it wasn't threatened. Yeah, but the Chinese (laughs) are selling us stuff left and right anyway. You think that if they had Taiwan, that would make—I mean, they're still going to— I don't. I just don't. I think see if that we were antagonistic to them, they might stop selling well, yeah. us chips. But if we just continue to trade yeah. a relationship with China, I don't think it would be a problem. No. Well, that, exactly. Well, and that's the other thing that's so dangerous here that I'm glad you brought up is that you know, as far as us and the Chinese are concerned, like our economies are entangled. Yeah. Like there's. But our economy would suffer more from losing China than China's economy would well, suffer from losing us. That's the point us. I'm making. In the same way that our economy <laughs> has suffered more from cutting Russia off from the rest of the world than Russia's has. Well, and that's that's the point I was going to make is you think things are bad now with us cutting off ties and stuff with Russia? Mm-hmm. Imagine what happens if like things get really heated between us and China and China's like, fine, we'll sell our products elsewhere. Yeah. Like, I mean... And you can say made in America all you want, but the truth is, is go walk around any grocery store or any, any, any place. Mm -hmm. Everything says made in China. Yeah. Like you want that stuff to stop coming in. Mm -hmm. It's, it, things are going to get real rough real quick. Yes. They provide a lot of cheap goods to the United States and, um, like yeah. it or not, we need it. Yeah. Like, I mean, because, I, I, hey, like, I'm I'm with you. Like, I think more stuff should be made in this country. Mm-hmm. But if you want to just cut off the spick of the stuff right now, yeah. you're, you're asking for some hard times. I like my t-shirts to cost $12 instead of $32. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you and, want, yeah, you talk about inflation. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the <laughs> one of the things that um, that China has cut off it is some of this chip manufacture or well export uh, yeah. of chips um, from Taiwan? Uh, Taiwan's an island; it's completely dependent on sea lanes. If oh yeah, if China's I cutting mean, that stuff blockaded, off. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a problem. Um, but uh, at the same time, the U.S. and this is one of the things that Pelosi was over there. Like Pelosi was over there meeting with um, CEOs of the biggest chip manufacturers in Taiwan as well. Yeah, and uh, at it, and the Chips and Science Act. Um, was being passed here uh, through yeah. the House again. Okay. Um, and what that does, one of the things that it does, is it subsidizes chip manufacture in the U.S. by more than $50 billion. Yeah. Um, but not necessarily for U.S. companies. 
<laughs> and so apparently like one of the things that Pelosi was trying to do was convince the, this, these Taiwanese companies to open chip factories in the U S that would then be subsidized by taxpayer money <laughs> um, to keep the prices down. So her <laughs> yeah. now, now th- think about this, <laughs> like from their perspective now, from like the Taiwanese government's perspective. Yeah. So Pelosi came in here and because of her direct provocation to China, um, they're now having more trouble exporting their chips and everything else. Yeah. And at the same time, she's trying to entice Taiwanese companies to move their production over to the U.S. Yeah. What's, how do you think the Chinese going to take to that? Or the Taiwanese, for that or, matter. Yeah, well, yeah. Because you're taking all those jobs out, <laughs> jobs of, Taiwan. out of Taiwan. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And the revenue for them um, exporting it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I don't think that we're doing the Taiwanese any favors here, I don't think Pelosi helped them in any way. Um, I think that she created more of a threat to Taiwan by visiting than by ignoring them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and everything I can tell, the only reason she wanted to do this is because she wanted to to be able to take a strong um, stance against China as she's getting ready to leave office. Because I think she's going to retire really soon here. Yeah, I, I think that we're we're knocking on the door. Maybe. She's making this strong stand against China to as um, something, a feather in her hat for when she runs for president in 2024. <laughs> oh, that would... That's hey, not entirely a joke. It's, it's not entirely a joke. <laughs> it's funny, though, because now that you mention it, like the bench ain't very big on that side of the aisle. That's true. Um, and, and they're going to want a more moderate, like old school... Democrat. They're not going to want yeah. an AOC or one of these hard left no, you're Democrats. Right. So. You, you make a compelling, uh, like I say, I hadn't really thought of it that way. I mean, they're talking about Hillary again. I, so. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah, because they don't, there's really nothing there as far as their, their, their rack of candidates goes. So who knows? I mean, maybe I hadn't considered that, that, but, but I had just considered it as like, this is something that she won't, she knows she's going to retire soon because mm-hmm. they're probably going to lose the house. Um, and this on her way out, a big, you know, I supported China when it was hard or it's something. Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I went against China when it was hard yeah. or whatever, you know. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> it makes yeah. you such a pariah in the U.S. to be against China. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it just on the way out the door or something. Mm-hmm. But, but you're right. I mean, who knows? Like, that's definitely a bold prediction, but it's not completely, <laughs> it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's likely. I just I don't think it's likely either. But it's <laughs> but it's interesting, like yeah. I say. Um, I, yeah, I, the, the whole thing the whole thing was just stupid. She should have left it alone. It was yeah. totally unnecessary. There's no sense. There's no sense in antagonizing nuclear powers just to antagonize nuclear powers, or yeah. just to say that you know we're the biggest toughest guy out there. Yeah, like we won't be told what to do, so we're gonna actively poke you in the eye yeah <laughs> so that we can show that we can yeah, yeah. I, I just and it, well it, and it's just bad diplomacy yeah. i mean at, at the end of the day that's and that's i guess that kind of sums up my my perspective on it is it, it's just it's not like if it's just bad diplomacy mm-hmm. like it's not it's not a good way a healthy way to handle the situation mm-hmm. um and, and it's just unnecessary yeah I mean, we we are already seeing a um, huge downside of antagonizing uh, a country that we're economically entangled with. Yeah. And we're far more dependent on China than we are on Russia exactly. economically. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just a bad move, man. I mean, but we're, we're actively, um, I guess, tearing down uh, Bastiat's aphorism that. Um, where goods cross borders, um, <laughs> militaries do not. Yeah, soldiers rarely do, or how's he say? Armies rarely do. Yeah, yeah. Now it's becoming far less rare. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it seems. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's it doesn't bode well for the future of our economy. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I guess last little item is uh, um, Ayman Al Zawari was oh, yeah. uh hit by a drone strike in Kabul, we're told. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't hear about this till this morning. My my mom mentioned it to me, and I was like, wow, I, didn't, I, you know, I hadn't 
I hadn't followed news in a couple of days, so I had to now, I had I, to look that one up. Yeah, I had uh-huh. heard about it. I mean, it's so what's to me what's kind of interesting there is like he was in Kabul. Like, yeah. So like the there's no way the Taliban didn't know he was there. Yeah. Um I think you're probably right about that. I mean, it's possible that it'd they be, know who he was. It's it's possible, but it's not likely. No. But he he we need to be careful not to um, make the Taliban and Al Qaeda synonymous. Yeah, well, he was an Al Qaeda guy, he not was. a Taliban. No, guy. No, I, I absolutely. Um, and you're right, but to it just makes you. It just it feeds into that whole. The whole reason we went over there was to keep Al Qaeda out of there, mm-hmm. and um, and they had agreed that they would do the same. And they had agreed they now, would. Now, yeah. To be fair to them, also like the guys. Not like he's like running around plotting terrorists. Yeah, things. he's like almost he's, eighty years old. Yeah, I think he's he's kind of out the he's game. He's out of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he certainly was of interest to the U.S. Like yeah. he, he's well, I mean, it's, it's a definitely, huge part of the jihadist movement. Yeah, I mean, it's a feather in Biden's cap to say that you know we got this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's still a big get. You yeah. Know. Um, I mean, but it's you know. We may as well hold the Egyptians responsible. He was Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. I um, I don't think this has any impact on the terror war as no. it exists today. Really. Uh, to um, me, it seems like it's just more of a justice served. Yeah. Type thing more than it is like you're not impacting the terror fight against terrorism by getting this guy. Yeah. But I, my real disappointment is that I, that means that I'll probably have less opportunity to say his name because this is one of the ones that I like really enjoy saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm an Al-Zawahri. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like I like some of those Arabic names. They sound good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I do find it... I, I find it interesting that he was in Kabul. I find it interesting that we've... that we did this now. Yeah. Um... Because it sounds like we were aware of his presence there for some time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Again, timed for just a, this, just a couple of months ahead of yeah. of uh, once again something else for the campaign trail, the midterms. So yeah. So yeah, I doubt that's a coincidence as well. Um, one of the things that my mom brought up though that is an interesting thing to contemplate um, is. Uh, how is this not an assassination? (laughs) And where do assassinations fall in terms of international law? Like I went digging a little bit. Um, I didn't have a lot of time because I found out about this today. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, But, um, it, there are prohibitions against assassination, except in cases like targeted killings. Um, except in cases of war. Now there well, we declared suppose, war on terrorism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a case to be made that the um, U.S. is still involved in a non-national, international, like not not focused on a nation international war against you know the various groups. Yeah. Um, kind of loose to me like so i suppose this is probably one of those things this is one of those things where the law could take either side i think where it's probably technically legal and probably technically illegal too depending on who's who's doing the research (laughs) who's who's the jurist (laughs) yeah um but uh it does bring up a question about you know this is something that has become much more popular or much more accepted yeah actually both I suppose. What well, was um, really kind of mainstreamed by Obama. Yeah. Like, I mean, he... With the drone war. With the drone war, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he ramped that bad boy up. Yeah. And I, what I try to remind people constantly, because when my mom brought this up, this, I was uh, thinking that it was uh, it was the other guy, and suddenly I've forgotten his name. Um, that's not Zarqawi. What, uh, we killed the guy and his son. He was uh, um, an American uh, citizen. I remember when it happened, uh, but yeah. Anwar al Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, remember, Obama employed the drone attack targeted killing against American citizens. Yeah. yeah. In Yemen, in, by the way, also. <laughs> right. Um, Anwar al Awlaki and his son, who was... His son was 16 at the time. Yeah. Um, now... 
I'm not saying that these, uh, particularly Anwar al-Awlaki, wasn't like a an absolute dissident against the U.S. government and urging war yeah. against the Jihad. U.S. government. Yeah. yeah. But he's an American citizen. Yeah. And he deserved a trial. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah. Um, and I, I maintain uh, still that the Constitution doesn't just apply to American citizens, yeah. that this is a statement of human rights. And so it seems to me if we know where they're at and we can do these targeted bombings, couldn't we like bring the military in to come scoop these guys up? Yeah, you would think that a small uh, special ops team could come grab them. Could get them, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Bring them back here for trial. And hey, if they get shot in the process, they get shot in the process. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know. but Like if it, the guy raises a gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but it's, killing a guy in his bed. Yeah, from a... Yeah. I don't know. It, it just because I don't know. I guess it, it just doesn't matter as much in American warrior society, but like it brings up some questions of honor there. Yeah, like I mean, it's I, cowardly to kill a man in his bed. Yeah, I, I from, regardless of what they've done <laughs> from yeah. Uh, yeah from three miles away and um, <laughs> you know however high up those well, drones and, fly. And you've got to remember because there's always like civilian casualties involved mm-hmm. in all of this too. It's yeah. not like I mean you call it targeted strike, but that's to make it sound good. Yeah. Like I mean that's well, and you do wonder. I, like I didn't get any details on this. Like did we did we drop this on a wedding or a funeral or something? Did <laughs> I mean because we've done that plenty of times before yeah i don't know the details on this one either i swear i thought i heard that it was an apartment complex but i don't think that's right i don't know i I honestly don't know yeah i heard that it was like some kind of a state like that he had you know this fancy oh this big area yeah Yeah. but um either way it is a question to kind of ponder like is it an assassination and how do we as a nation feel about our government assassinating yeah even enemies yeah like, no. I, yeah. And that's, I, I guess my position is more like I was saying. Like, I mean, it, there's just seems like there's cleaner ways to handle this type mm-hmm. thing than just like drone bombing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I always, I, the, you know, the thing that I always wonder on these is uh, did we ask permission from the Taliban? To I hit this it. guy? Because, yeah, I doubt it too. Yeah, because the, the concern there would be well, if we told them we were coming in, they mm-hmm. might telling the lead right or, you know and remember we assassinated Soleimani during the trump presidency on iraqi soil yeah without asking them oh yeah yeah and they're supposedly an ally <laughs> right <laughs> you know um and i think that there i do think that there's a real problem there and i guess that's what we've been talking about this whole time is that the u.s doesn't recognize any other nation's sovereignty no and and there's a reason we don't recognize there's there's a legit reason why we don't recognize any other country's sovereignty and that reason is is who's going to stop us yeah biggest military in the world mm-hmm. like by far by far yeah it, it's not even close so yeah. who's going to stop us like we're the we're the world police we're the empire mm-hmm. and there's nothing anybody can do about it yeah um, I, that's what i was uh, saying to mom today is that that the us military is the enforcement arm of international law yeah and so the law doesn't apply to us. Yeah, exactly. We get to do what we want, you know, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And then we had a weird discussion about police. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, I mean, yeah, here we are. Like, we stoke well, I mean, these conflicts. Yeah, that's what happens then, when you get too much power. You mm-hmm. get you get crazy with it. Yeah. And, and that's where we're at at this stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I say this stage because I don't think it'll be this way forever. Yeah. Whenever you hear somebody talking about the Russia's expansionist policies or China's expansionist policies, just remember that the U.S. is the one with 800 military bases across 80 countries. That's that's insane, in insanity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's your, I think I think Russia has something like 15 foreign military bases. Uh, I don't know how many China has. I just I don't understand how you can make an argument that that makes us safer. Yeah, I, I just I, because that's the argument. That's the argument from the other side is, yeah, well, we need that to make sure we know what's going on. That we have influence in these areas. But at the end of the day, that's what breeds the terrorism. Yeah. You're creating enemies. You're, yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you antagonize everybody, somebody's eventually going to hit you. Exactly. So that's, and, that's my perspective. Yeah. And like I, I, th- I think that America comes off as a bully. 
And what we, the other thing that we do is that we, we become the, you know, the big tough guy stand behind the little guy that's talking a bunch of trash like Taiwan and Ukraine. Yeah. You know, that they couldn't defend themselves, but they know they got that big guy standing behind them. Oh yeah. You know, they're that. All right. I can't think of a word that I can say on the <laughs> podcast suddenly. Um, they're that just like obnoxious little guy in high school that always got away with saying what he had to say because he was best friends with the, you know, the f- football linebacker, right? Um, yeah. So he knew that that linebacker had his back and he could say whatever he want because nobody would start anything with him because then they'd have to deal with the linebacker too. Yep. And right. and that's what we, ha- we're, we're that linebacker yeah. and we have created all these little obnoxious a-holes <laughs> all over the world. That's a good way to put it. I like that. <laughs> Um, all right. Anything else or we want to wrap it up? No, I think we should definitely wrap it up. I was going to say just one more thing on the, um, inflation act, Mm -hmm. um, inflation reduction, reduction act. Um, and I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but there's, there's definitely things that they could have put in that bill to like really done some good and, Mm -hmm. and really help the economy. Um, and there's just none of that stuff's in there. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they could have done stuff to reduce regulation and make government smaller and, mm-hmm. and really get business going and no interest in doing any of that. Yeah. Stop printing money. Get out of people's way. Yeah. Let the market do its thing. Yeah. And they wouldn't have even had to have went as far as me and you think they should go. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could, have, they could have done some nibbling around the edges and done better than what's in this bill. Yeah, it's true. Um, I just I, I I just thought of that a minute ago when we were getting ready to wrap up. I was like, that's that's worth mentioning that there there were options here and they weren't taken. Yeah, we were talking about a bunch of stuff that they could have done a couple of nights ago. We were instead, yeah. and now I can't think of any of it. Yeah, we we had a whole <laughs> list because that's that's kind of where I had wanted to go with all of that. But I just yeah. wanted to kind of at least put that out there that you know there there were options here that weren't taken, mm-hmm. and you know. It's a shame, but yeah. it's the world we live in. Yeah, I, I expect no, no, no different. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the government's answer to everything is more government. Exactly, and so, more spending. Until we get a bunch of libertarians in there, this is just what we got to deal with. Yep, and and just remember that when it comes voting time, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> yeah, um, that maybe the answer, like you've had, what 150 years of Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. Maybe they don't have the answers. Yeah. How much? How much better are things <laughs> <laughs> politically? <laughs> yeah. Um, so. And maybe it's time to try something else. Absolutely. But uh, we plan to be back here next week. Um, oh, I'm just going to mention we uh, we I'm I probably shouldn't mention it because maybe it'll be a problem again. But um, we had episode 101, so we're on episode like 140 ish here yeah. um so this would have been like nine months ago that okay. we recorded this episode uh episode 101 was pulled from youtube and we got a strike oh yeah for medical misinformation Ooh. or disinformation i, I remember that yeah no, no no this was this week oh this week yeah oh really no yeah I thought, no well, no, no that was a the one before was like episode i don't know 60 something or 70 <laughs> something so they're still going back through and pulling stuff apparently wow um so i i did a little one click appeal i didn't Honestly, yeah. I didn't even listen didn't to it again of, or didn't anything. Put a lot of like, I didn't put it, yeah. any comments in. I I did think about commenting. Um, is what we said uh, in um, contradiction to what the WHO or the CDC said at the time that we published it, or now? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, because but, those are two different things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how consistent we are here. Mm. But uh, I just did a little one-click appeal, and surprisingly, yeah. they um, they dropped the strike and uh, reinstated our video oh wow well, yeah so i still have no idea what it was <laughs> what the about. issue was about <laughs> yeah. interesting yeah what specifically well i know facebook is, is notorious for that to find and post this is it. youtube oh, yeah i know but okay. i'm just saying facebook in general mm-hmm. is notorious for going back months and even years and finding posts that you made and and you violated community standards a year mm-hmm. ago yeah <laughs> like yeah. so um, I, I guess I guess YouTube's the same way. Yeah, honestly, I did the appeal just because I thought, well, at least this is going to suck up some of their resources. Right. Well, Somebody's that's, going to have to listen to it. That's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, you know, worked out, and I was surprised and pleasantly yeah. surprised. Yeah. So, um, on that note, you can follow us 
on uh, iTunes or wait, no, that's not right. Follow us on Facebook. Yep. Subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, yep. or Podbean. Um, like and share. Uh, tell your friends. Um, comments are appreciated. Uh, reviews are appreciated on iTunes or Podbean. Um, and you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. Uh, that's about it. And uh, so, yeah, we'll be back here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.